transform tool, uh, pathfinder tool and the shape blender. So we'll just get the program open and first up I want you to make a new artboard in your file. So open the, um, the file that you use to create your color swatches, choose artboard and just click on this button up here which will create a new artboard and then click on your page. So what we're going to do is look at how you can use some tools in Illustrator to create uh, shapes um, to help draw your symbol. Now because you've been working so much with uh, abstraction and playing with reflection and um, other sort of techniques to create um, tiles which can be put in repeat then there's a high chance that you're working with very simple shapes and within these simple shapes there may be a lot of reflection and repetition occurring. So you can see in this design there is a lot of um, simple shapes which are being reflected. If we try to draw these with the pen tool, uh, chances are we would find it quite difficult to get an exact smooth um, semicircle shape like this one here. We can use um, the shape tool and pathfinder to achieve a much more controlled effect. So I'm just looking at this little design here and I'm going to replicate it. I want you to um, either do the same as me or do a similar task using a different shape perhaps that's more relevant to your own design. So I'll just zoom out of here So uh, and move over to the side. First up, we need to create that semicircle shape. So we're going to begin with the ellipse tool. And if I hold down shift and drag, that will create a circle on my page. I'll use the pen tool to draw a line that intersects the circle. And um, while that is uh, command click, so oops. So command click to complete the shape, complete the shape. And then if I just click on that line, I'm going to change it to a black. So you can see my color palette is here, which I can use. And I'll make the stroke a bit thicker so you can see what I'm doing. And now I've got a circle with a line. I'm going to click on both of these and use the Pathfinder to, um, to divide those two. So my Pathfinder is already open, but if yours isn't, you can go up to Window and find it there. Okay, so, oops, I just got rid of mine. Bring it back. Here's Pathfinder. When I've got those two shapes selected, then I choose Pathfinder Divide. I click on that and it immediately cuts that line through the circle. So this is a really easy way to create um, sort of and control different types of shapes. At the moment, when I click on this, it's grouped together. And I want to ungroup it so I can just select that part there. So I can go up to while it's selected, object, and choose ungroup. And notice there's um, some hotkeys here, which is command shift G. So I'll just click it here. And now when I click on the object, you'll see it's in two parts. So I'm just going to click and drag that bit over there. And this is my other object. So if I wanted to uh, always select both of those parts together, I'll hold down shift and use command G, and that has grouped the object together. You see it's got the square around it now. So you see I can drag it and it will stay together. Um, command shift G, and now they're separate pieces. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to show me how you have divided a shape into two pieces or more and then once you've done that ungroup it, select the part that you want to use as to create a design which is showing me some uh, reflection and, and rotation and um, hold down alt command drag and that will uh, create a copy of the shape. Okay I'm going to go up to object, arrange, uh, transform and choose rotate. So I want to rotate the shape on a 45 degree angle so I can get that kind of flower effect that we were looking at before. This is conveniently already in here. Notice that uh, this says negative 45 degrees so that shows me that 
when I put a negative in, the rotation will move in this direction. Uh, without the negative, it will move in the other direction. I've got preview on, which is uh, allowing me to see what the preview will look like. Turn that off and it's back to the original. So I'm going to press copy. And that has created a new iteration of the shape. If I click Command D, it will create another one. And you'll see it will repeat that rotation. So I've got the three that I want there. I'll just zoom in on it. And now I'm just going to move them into the configuration that I want. So pick up this one. Move it so that those corners align. You can see those nice green intersect lines show me that they are in the right place. Actually, I might move it slightly so it's overlapping. And um, then bring this one. Okay, I just managed to isolate the shape there. That's why it, the background went a little bit opaque. But um, you can just click on the, the artboard and it goes back to normal. So click on there and I'm just going to play around to get that exactly where I want it to be. Maybe I need to zoom in to get that better aligned. So you can see if you are working on something where um, you need a better alignment, always zooming in is always a good thing to help you to see exactly what's going on. And that's where you see the beauty of the vectors because they um, just remain nice and slick the whole time. Okay, one more try. Uh. Okay. I'm just going to leave it like that for this. Okay, I've got my shape. It's reflecting the way I want. I'm going to put in some colour. Choose that and here's my colour swatches. We'll just um, show some variation there. Now that I've got three colours, I'll select the whole shape, object, arrange, uh, transform and this time I'm going to reflect. So click reflect and you'll see I have options of an angle, a horizontal axis, or a vertical axis. So I want to reflect this on the horizontal axis. So I click that and you can see that this is showing me a preview of what that will look like. There's the original, there's the preview. Click copy and now I'm seeing both at the same time. So I want to drag this copy down here so that it's starting to look like what that original design I was looking at is like. Let's drag it up a little bit more. Okay, so now that I've got that done, it's looking good. I'll just put in some other colours just to have a wee play to see what it looks like. And okay, I'm pretty happy with how my symbol's looking. So you can go in and do all sorts of different reflections and rotations uh, of this design uh, according to what you need to do within your own work. There's one more thing I want to show you which I think is really useful. At the moment this is made of six parts. I'm going to select the whole thing and choose this um, button Merge so that I can merge all of those paths together and just have one shape. If I try and do it at the moment, nothing really happens. And that is because to merge you need everything to be the same colour. So I'm going to make my design yellow. Choose Merge. And there you can see I've got the merged object. Actually, I've just remembered that I want you to show me both. So I'm going to go Control z Control z Okay, there we go. There goes the design that you just made. And I'm going to use Command-Alt to make a copy. And then we'll do the merge with the copy. Okay, make it one color and merge. Okay, there's my shape merged together. So you've just shown me that you can um, divide a shape using Pathfinder, you can use the rotation and reflection tools, and you can merge a complex shape into one path. I want you to uh, show me examples of this, just lay them out on your page. So we've got three, and then take the merged example, and we're going to make a copy of this down here and then I want you to reflect it so along the vertical axis click OK oops one more time click copy 
So we've got two. Take one of them, hold down shift and move it across to the other side of your artboard and change the colour. What I want to show you here is how you can use a tool called Blend to create um, different iterations of your symbol moving from this shape to this shape. The reason I want to show you this is because when you move into Illustrator, you sorry, into Flash, you may want to blend one shape into another. Doing it in Flash when you've got a complex shape can result in some pretty awful um, kind of transitional phases where the object completely morphs into some ugly shapes. So if you prepare your um, shapes so you've got the iterations of how the shape is going to change from one form to another, this will help you create a much smoother transition in Flash. So select your objects that you want to blend, choose blend. We're going to go into the options, make sure that you have chosen uh, specified steps instead of smooth, choose the number, you might just go with five, and click OK. So once you've done that, go back to object, this time choose blend and make. And this has just created this kind of quite bizarre sort of move from this shape into this shape and it's also blending the colours from one to another. So you can try a few different options um, to see what sort of interesting effects you get with the blend. Once you've um, come up with what you're happy with, go back to object, blend and choose expand. So when I do this, it's just changed those objects in the middle from just being uh, essentially a visualization of what it looks like into uh, these now defined objects with their own paths. So now I've got seven symbols which is showing me how I could create a transformation from one object to the other. So I can kind of space those apart a little bit just to see what they look like. And there we go. Okay, so once you've completed this task, I would like you to uh, save it. So this time you've got um, your color swatches plus your symbols. So maybe we might change the name of it, change it to save as color and symbols, put your name on the end, make it a PDF and click save. So when you've completed this task, you can upload this to the R drive and then you should be ready to build your own symbol in Illustrator.